hi guys i'm back again today with the geography now netherlands so before we start don't forget to subscribe click the bell button and let's see let's hear let's listen let's learn hey guys so this is gonna be a little awkward why because two why? years ago my dutch friend vincent who used to do the animations before i regrettably hired ken wait what he came and visited here in la long story short i oh. promised him he could be in the Ooh. netherlands episode so we pre-shot some footage and this was the intro we made <whistles> Bugs. I flew over this guy, a real Dutchman. Say hi to Vincent right here. Hey, Vincent. Get hey. me fit though. Vincent, I know the Dutch are tall, but just step down from the box, okay? Just step down. Oh. You get off of your box then. Oh. <laughs> Good for me. I can never top those days. Oh, and this episode is on the Netherlands. So what happened to Bobby? It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Now, there are many countries that deal with water issues. Some lack water, some have too much water, and some, like the Netherlands, have oh, yeah. bridled the wild stallion Where and have learned how to control forgot. the water and use it to their advantage. Yeah. Water is probably we the just, most powerful element in the Netherlands. To that. Without it, they would be, I don't know, pretty useless. So what do you say, 2016, really. Vincent? And now, politics. Oh, Vincent! Vincent. Okay, not Bobby. Why did I say so, Bobby? So yeah, stop why calling this place Holland. Why would someone from the Netherlands be called Bobby? Like why, right? So that's my fault. But if you are Bobby and you are an, from Netherlands or you're Dutch, then why, right? I doubt it. If you're like you migrated there, you are half American probably. Uh, then you would probably be called Bobby. But if you are literally full-blooded Dutch, you've, you 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 didn't migrate even, you've never left, you were born there, why are you called Bobby? Okay, this is not the point. Let's go back. Holland, that's just one part of the country. <laughs> even though their country's national tourism website is called holland.com. You're not helping us here, Dutchies. Oh, and yeah, hey, there's a town called us. The Hulk. First of all, oh, the country is located in northwestern Europe along the North Sea, bordered by Germany and Belgium. The country is divided into 12 provinces. Here's oh, 2016 no. Vincent so, uh, naming all of them for you. They are Limburg, North Holland, Zeiland, South Holland, Utrecht, Gelderland, Overijssel, Drenthe, Groningen, Friesland, North Holland, and the newest province, Flevoland. Almost all of Flevoland was reclaimed from the Zuiderzee in the 1950s. Holland, so besides being famous sea. for making cheese, and clogs we also make our own land the country kind of has two capitals Amsterdam like the largest cheese. city and economic hub of the country and home to the royal palace and just to skip over the third largest clogs, city the I'm Hague sure. acts as the second capital which holds the seat of government as well as the International Court of Justice the second largest city though would be Rotterdam which holds mm -hmm. the busiest seaport in all of Europe the busiest airport though is of course Amsterdam's Schiphol International Europe's third busiest airport carrying nearly Schiphol. 70 million passengers annually now we reach the overseas territories apart from the mainland European part the country actually holds sovereign over six other island Ooh. entities in the Caribbean, remnants of the colonial past. These are collectively called the Dutch Caribbean. And here's where it gets a little confusing. Technically, the Netherlands is a country made up of four countries, the mainland Netherlands, as well as three other constituent countries, kind of like what Wales and Scotland are to the UK. Okay, my head they hurts. are Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin, which is actually half I of an island shared yeah. with the French overseas territory of Aww. the same name, but in French. This means that this one island is the only area which the Netherlands technically borders France. These guys hold a high level of of autonomy, they can have their own constitutions and currency. Otherwise, the remaining three islands are Bonaire, St. Eustatius, and Little Saba, which, by the way, has the shortest airport runway in the world. Oh. These three fall under the title of special municipalities and do not belong to any province. They are directly mm. controlled by the Dutch government. However, in 2011, they decided to switch currencies and adopt the U.S. dollar. Why? All these islands lie in the subregion known as the Lesser Antilles. Aruba, Curaçao, and Bonaire are usually referred to as the ABC islands, lying in the subregion mm. of the Leeward Antilles, whereas St. Eustatius, Saba, and St. Martin, usually called the SSS Islands, are located in the subregion of the Leeward Islands. Keep in mind, Social at one point, all six of these islands were called the Netherlands Antilles and operated collectively as a single constituent country with the capital at Willemstad and Curaçao. They even competed separately in the Olympics. With uh -oh. the exception of Aruba, who had autonomy in 1986, it wasn't Aruba. until the early 2000s when they all voted for their future, and it kind of went like this. Okay, guys, you have four options for your future. Choose wisely. You can have closer ties to us, remain just as you are in the Netherlands Antilles, autonomy as a constituent country within the kingdom of the Netherlands or you can opt for complete independence as a new nation and closer ties to us. Netherlands we vote for autonomy as constituent countries me too okay I mean what that the? makes sense also 
We want closure ties and we'll settle for a special municipality status. Really, Bonaire? You're one of us, the ABC Island. You're really gonna ditch us like that and leave us with this He's half Reggie Magoo? Yep, yep, deal with it. And that's basically how it went down. So there you go. That's how you make a Netherlands. Waterways dominate the country, though. There's Why would you want to cut no ties with Netherlands? Like the but best. how did it end up this way? If Somewhere around the 9th century, people were kind of fed up with all the flooding, and they invented these seawalls known as dikes, which surrounded polders or reclaimed land plots protected we learned by about the dikes. To this day, the Netherlands has reclaimed about a fifth of its total landmass from the sea. So, what would happen if all the I dikes were guy. destroyed and all the water just came and flooded everything? Scientists Dang. speculate that the country would go from looking like this to this. Yeah. Whoa, Amsterdam would be gone. Yep. Luckily, the Dutch are fantastic engineers and have been taming this dragon for centuries. And speaking of engineering, there are so many notable spots to check out in case you ever visit. So many museums. Oh. But the most notable one probably being the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, the Royal Palace, the Van Gogh Museum, so the Anne beautiful. Frank House, numerous castles museums? like these, numerous star-shaped fortress towns, so mm. many amusement parks like these, the enclaves and exclaves of Beryl Nassau. We no. talked about this in the Belgium episode. The world's no, largest flower it. garden at Kuchenhof, Austerlitz Pyramid, this oh, prehistoric yeah. burial site, and of course there are somewhere around 1,000 historic windmills left in the country from the 1800s, mostly no. in the Kinderdijk area, a UNESCO heritage site. Keep in mind though, the country has a ton of modern Kinder wind Dyke. turbines that help supply energy to the like, nation, a topic that will be discussed maybe in- Maybe small dikes or children dikes? Greek philosopher Pythias visited in the third Pythias. century BC, and he said about this place, more people have died in the struggle against water than in the struggle against Aww. men. The Netherlands is really unlike any other country in Europe because in order for them to even have physical land, a lot of work has to go into it. For one, the country is the lowest country in Europe, elevation-wise. Over a quarter of the land and a fifth of the population lies below sea level, and about half of the land lies less than a meter above sea level. The lowest point actually being here at Soitplas Polder, and the highest point of the mainland European part of the country at a small hill called Falseberg, just over a thousand feet or 322 meters high. However, in the entire kingdom of the Netherlands, the highest point would actually be Mount Scenery, a potentially active volcano on the island of Saba uh -oh. in the Caribbean. Back to mainland Europe though, within this complex system of waterways and canals, the famous Rhine River that goes through all of Europe and the longest in the country actually ends in Rotterdam. The largest body of water would be Lake or Bay Yeltsamir, contained within the N302 and E22 highways. In order to manage all the flooding in the south though, the Netherlands has undergone one of the largest engineering projects in modern history. The Delta Works is a series of massive elevated levees that close off sea estuaries, preventing flooding. They even have backup levees in case one down the line bursts. In the north though, the Valden Islands act as kind of like natural barriers against the sea. All this land reclamation has left many of the inland areas exposed to what are labeled as the largest open sand drifts in Europe. Keep in mind, they are not deserts, but rather strange wet sandy plots in the middle of green shrubbery, a rare natural sight to come across anywhere in the world. So in a nutshell, the entire country is basically one big Big river delta. Hmm. We should hang out sometime. Whew. So that's just about it for now. I gotta get my triple shot of espresso break, which means we need a guy who knows a few things. <laughs> Besides all the water chaos, the Netherlands is quite a powerful nation considering its size. They rank in the top 20 largest world economies, usually around 17th or 16th place, and they rank somewhere in the top 5 to 10 largest exporters on Earth. In fact, they have the oldest stock exchange in the world, dating back to 1602. Didn't that lead to like the whole tulip mania thing where people sold a single bulb for the price of like an entire ship? That was not the stock market, that was just a socioeconomic phenomenon and at its height sold for 10 times the annual weight of a skilled craftsman. Anyway, today, although what? they produce about 80% of the world's tulips and over half oh, of the world's cut so flower pretty. exports, their economy is mostly driven by the service and energy sectors. After the discovery of a natural gas field in 1959, the Dutch became a fuel powerhouse. The Shell Company became the largest and most internationally mm. recognized Dutch company in the so world. So that's Besides a the petroleum Dutch industry, company, though, The Shell. Dutch are well known for their electronics and tech innovation. The company Philips invented Philips. the audio tape, which helped wow. pioneer other formats like videotapes, CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. Yeah. Yeah, the company was Dutch, but keep in mind it was invented in Hassel, Belgium. Oh, Belgium. Uh -oh. We love oh. you, but <laughs> don't try to f***ing take this from us. Otherwise, the Dutch have made great strides towards environmental protection. It's not uncommon to find animal crossing bridges to allow wildlife to cross over highways. Oh. Over 70 mammal species exist here, such as hares, hedgehogs, stoats, and deer. In addition, cool. according to their government website, they produce over 65 billion euros in vegetable, fruit, flour, meat, and dairy what? products. Speaking oh, wow. of which, the modern orange-colored carrot was 
was originally bred orange here in the Netherlands to specifically honor the king. Since then, orange carrots are now kind of an international staple. So and carrots were which, never orange? Food. Some top notable or, dishes you uh, guys in Dutch geography suggest that we mention of, include things uh, like carrots? various types of stamp pots, Dutch pancakes with powdered Ooh. sugar, apple tarts, bitter ballen, split pea soup, rookwurst, stroop waffles, Ooh. so many potato dishes, brined herring and smoked eel. Gin was invented here. Mind. Sorry, Brits. For breakfast, chocolate I'm sprinkles so on toast oh. is common. And the pride and joy of the nation, how to cheese. Yep, oh. that's how you pronounce it, guys. Oh, oh really? and keep in mind, they Buda, used howda? to be the largest beer exporters Let in the world. Heineken being their top brand until Mexico beat them in 2010. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. What? It's also important to note that you will probably find lots of Indonesian... So Heineken, wait. Heineken is the Netherlands? It's not German? Oh, the lies. The lies, the lies. But anyways, I don't even drink Like satay so. or salted cod buns. Satay. A little cultural cue that hints towards the colonial past, which brings oh. us to... Thank you, Noah. Follow him on Instagram. Yep. Okay. Okay, that just happened. Now, in Europe, you have all different types of people that operate with all different customs and ideologies. Here, they have two sayings that kind of sum up how a lot of their country operates. I like this. I wish it's and like 20 hours long. Geen tide. Not really. How was that, Dutch? It's terrible? Long. Good? Well, you're gonna get what I give. Anyway, <laughs> the country has about 17.5 million people and is the most densely populated nation in Europe. About 77% of the population identifies as Dutch, Dutch, to whatever extent that may mean, whereas 10% are other Europeans, and the remainder are made up of other people groups, mostly Turks, Indonesians, Indonesians as well as the Surinamese, and surprisingly, even some Americans. They use the euro as their currency, they use the type C as Maybe as I outlets, and they drive on the right side. Be an of the Indonesian. Road. Now, then we all I know can that Dutch is the official language of the Netherlands. <laughs> However, if you speak English, you should have no problem at all visiting. Netherlands oh. has the highest proficiency in English out of any non-English official country in the world. Somewhere around 9 out of 10 Dutch people claim they can comfortably speak English, and around 94% of the country is in some way bilingual. Geography Anna told me a joke. Many times Dutch kids will ask their parents, Hey mom. Yes honey. Why do we have to learn English, but the British don't have to learn Dutch? Because our ancestors decided it would be a great idea to trade They're New York smart. for Suriname and one small island in Indonesia. It's important to note, though, that there are two other regional languages did, accepted did in Dutch society. The they are Frisian, spoken in the northern Friesland region, and the other being Papimiento, a Dutch Creole spoken in the ABC Islands. And it's already kind of well known that the Dutch are the tallest people. But it's good that they are, like, the country keeps like they learn English in school because there's a lot of countries still that they don't use English or they don't teach English in school so they have to come to countries like Philippines or go to uh, maybe America I don't know where they go to but most people will come to the Philippines and learn English like Japanese Koreans sometimes Chinese, um, where else? Mostly those are the countries, the Middle East also, um, because they don't teach English there. And now English is sought after in a lot of companies or if you want to work abroad, now the children are struggling because they have to now graduate from school or whilst going to school, learn English somewhere else. So it's kind of like too much, right? Instead of just putting it in the system look at dutch they can speak english they can speak their language they didn't forget their culture but they also learn english who is thriving now they are it's crazy why do they have like 20 steps ahead of everyone right why are they thinking ahead of every country it's crazy Miento, a Dutch Creole spoken in the ABC Islands. And it's already kind of well known that the Dutch are the tallest people on average in the world. Yeah. Men averaging around six foot one and women around five foot seven. What and once again, here's eating? 2016 Vincent explaining. Latest studies have shown that natural selection has been the biggest reason. Being tall is equal to being more athletic, successful, and healthy. Many educated men start families after their studies. Fast forward a couple of years with length being very heritable and the result is a nation of giants. Yeah, we're outbreeding short people. Mm. Religion in the Netherlands is interesting because historically they used to be predominantly Christian 
Christian, mostly Protestant, but today about half the population identifies as unaffiliated, which depending oh. on who you ask could be anything from the largest unaffiliated group, agnostics, at about 34%, to the growing number of eetists at around 28%, what which is, is kind of like a technical eatus? term for spiritual but not religious. Ooh, Otherwise, okay. Islam at about 5% of the population is mostly practiced by Turkish and Indonesian communities. Christianity, mm -hmm. although not practiced regularly by most of the people, still plays a heavy cultural role in the Netherlands. Holidays like Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, and Ascension are still celebrated by everyone in a Dutch manner. At oh, one well, point, we they were a vast about. empire that spanned across <laughs> every inhabited <laughs> continent. Australia was at one point called New Holland, New Zealand, Ooh. named after the Zealand province, Tasmania, named after this Dutch guy, New York was once called New Amsterdam, and so on. I Otherwise, what that. is the Dutch way of doing things? Many of you guys, the Dutch geography have told me, there's a Dutch saying, is act wearing normal, orange? Because... which is ironic considering that they are almost anything but normal. <laughs> and here's random Hannah to explain culture stuff. Historically, the Dutch have always kind of had a counter traditional mindset that shaped the way they developed as a nation. For one, they are one of the few remaining monarchies left in the world, technically a unitary parliamentary constitutional monarchy that limits the royal powers. And the people generally like their king. He even has a holiday need to, to learn about and that. the entire country wears the national color of orange. Yeah. Of course, the country is known I see for being that a when I watch honor and passing uh, what many in the world see as controversial laws. They were the first Roca. country to legalize same-sex marriage, Ooh, they have regulated legal legal prostitution, euthanasia, and they have a policy of tolerance toward recreational soft drugs like marijuana. People 18 years or older are allowed up to 5 grams on them, otherwise it's a misdemeanor. They are world renowned for excelling in field hockey, speed skating, and volleyball teams. Ooh, Sailing volleyball. is of course one of their longest pastimes. Sport. They even have a huge festival once every 5 years called the Sailed Amsterdam Festival. For oh, some wow. reason, it's common for people to give birth in their own homes as opposed to a hospital. About one third of all babies are born this way. Uh, what about those clog things? Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, in the past, they actually served a very useful purpose. They were what worn by farmers, fishermen, oh. and artisans in the past to protect their feet from nails. I've never read the history of clogs, so I'm so tuned in. I want to go closer <laughs> because I want to hear it. <laughs> Why? Right? They were worn by farmers, fishermen, and artisans in the past to protect their feet from nails, fish hooks, and other sharp objects. Today, they and are mostly sold sense. as souvenirs, yeah. and very few people actually wear them, but they're pretty cool. Oh, and hey, Anna, what's up with all those spinny windmill thingy mabobbers? Ah, uh, yes, the iconic symbol of the Netherlands. Well, many of these historic windmills were actually used to pump out excess water to reclaim the land that they now mm. use for farming, all before electricity. And as for music, the... Actually, we know. I got this one. Barb what? said I could have my own segment in the show now instead of just being a one-liner guy. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Keith has been upgraded, so yeah. Well, well, enjoy it. Actually, I've seen him in a lot of other well, videos. Well, that just so, happened. Yeah. Again, I guess everybody has superpowers now. Historically Except speaking, me. the Dutch contributed much to the Baroque period at the end of the Renaissance, with numerous composers, organ players, and vocalists rooted in Christianity. Traditional clog dancing was also a cool way to add percussion to folk music in rural areas. Mm. Today, however, even though there are many genres the Dutch enjoy, electronic music reigns supreme. Exactly. Most of the best well-known DJs yep. in the EDM scene across the world That's are why I know. Netherlands. And the Amsterdam Dance event, ADE, is is the world's the top DJ's and largest awesome. electronic music conference. And I want to so go if you to come out here, get um, ready to get <laughs> shocked with some musical electricity. Thank you, Keith. And speaking of the development of the Netherlands over time, let's talk about history in the quickest way I can put it. Hamburg and Bronze Age cultures, Iron Age with Celt and Germanic groups, Gallic Wars, the Romans come in, Frankish kingdoms, Charlemagne, blah, blah, blah. Friesland once had a Viking ruler, Lotharingia, Holy Roman Empire, confusing Burgundian and Spanish Habsburg and city-states, the Spanish takeover, Dutch revolt, 80 years of war against Spain, oh, this gosh. dude is a hero, Golden Age and stock market, Dutch East India Company, Is this why the colors orange? Years, Dutch oh. Empire, Napoleon drama, no. Belgium breaks away, Luxembourg breaks away, Hi, World War One, relatively neutral, World War Two, attacked by Germans, not neutral, decolonialism after the war, mining Ooh. golden age, founding co-members of the European coal and steel community, which would later become the EU, government encourages over half a million people to move out, Euro adopted, and here we are today. Some notable people you guys, the Dutch history. geography suggest we mention, might include people like William of Orange, the first king, Michael de Reuter, possibly the most famous painters, Vincent van Gogh and Rembrandt, Antony van Llewellyn-Hook, Willem Berendt, Abel Taz, Anne Frank, Max Verstappen, mm -hmm. Glennis Grace, Dick Bruna, these know. soccer players, these skaters, and of course the royal family. And of course there's so many others I could have mentioned. Of course I butchered all the pronunciations, but we're really running out of time and we gotta finish this marathon. So without further ado, Sorry, let's see who too. the Netherlands hangs out with.
Now, there's a reason why it's called going Dutch when paying Excuse for a meal. Me. The Netherlands likes to share. Systematic and mathematically equivalent to what is like owed to equal. each based on the merit they've earned. First of all, pretty much all the former colonies have some kind of amicable relation to the Netherlands. The Afrikaans Dutch language in South Africa is basically Dutch? just an Africanized version of Dutch. Tons of Surinamese and Indonesians have been migrating to the Netherlands mm. for decades. Otherwise, the USA and Canada are very close friends as well. During World War II, the royal family actually took refuge in Canada, and Canada actually quickly changed the law in which the hospital was temporarily considered extra territorial so that the princess could be born Dutch. Oh, to this wow. day, the Netherlands sends tons of flowers every year in gratitude. For the U.S., the oh, two really? go way back all the way to New Amsterdam before it was New York. The Dutch have immigrated to the U.S. for centuries. Five American presidents have been of Dutch descent. They are each other's third largest direct foreign investors. They are both charter members of NATO since 1949. And overall, in most global affairs, the two usually work together as close allies. With Germany, it's like a funny love-hate relationship. Like, the two share so much historically, both being under the same influence influences like the Western Roman Empire, the Franks, and even their first king, William of Orange, belonged to a German royal house. Then again, World War II was kind of like a jerk move, and the Dutch never really forgot about it. But nonetheless, they've moved on, and today things are fine. Germany is their largest trading partner, both in imports and exports. Many Germans and Dutch cross over and visit, study, live, and have families with each other's countries. When it comes to their best friend, however, almost every single Dutch person I have talked to has said their little brother they love picking fun on and calling stupid, Belgium. Or at Aww. least specifically the Northern Flanders region of Belgium where the Dutch speakers are. And many see the Flanders region as just an extension of the Dutch realm. The royal families love each other. King William Alexander even bestowed the Knight Grand Cross to King Philip and his wife. Flemish and Dutch people have been intermarrying and cooperating side by side since the beginning. Yeah. And even after Belgium's independence, they've still clung on as the only two Dutch official speaking nations in Europe. And even then, Belgium is only half Dutch speaking, so they really can't afford to separate ties. In conclusion, the lowest nation in Europe with the tallest people on earth and with centuries of discovery, invention, innovation, and tradition, it's no wonder why the Dutch say they keep their heads above water. Stay tuned, New Zealand. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're tall, so that so once again, when Vincent, they, they, they so they can just stand there Dutchman, and you have made your country not proud. Drown. Dutch bunch. Oh. oh, is that a thing? <laughs> this has been a really, really interesting um, watch. I wish it was longer because I feel like there's so much still. Like we keep watching these types of videos or any other type of videos that's relating to netherlands or even germany but i feel like there's so much more that we haven't even scraped the surface like is, is do you feel what i feel like is there times when you watch this and you're like rookie but you don't know half of it that's how i feel every time it's like i've been, i know now this part of it but i feel like there's so much still but anyways we're gonna you know learn little by little so if you like this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video bye